One of the things I've been thinking about this week is continuity. I, I'm teaching an online call course, Computer Assisted Language Learning, and I want to open it up and I want to invite people and all that stuff, but I don't want to do it session by session. You know, so much of the material is reusable and I want to create sort of not only a, a hub for the stuff that I teach that is going to be ongoing, but that anyone can take these resources and have sort of an ever-present mookish kind of collaborative environment where, or cooperative, depending on your take on it, uh, where they can say, hey, I'm running this course too, and I'd like to tap into this community to connect with the, the, the larger community of people who are learning this stuff. So I've been contemplating ways to set that up in a way that it's, it's distributed and no one has to do too much heavy lifting. All ideas welcome. You're talking about a, a set of resources, or you're talking about a set of resources with a community? Uh, yeah. The latter. Are you looking for a cross pollination? Yes. Uh, uh, okay, because I, I see that actually happening between CMC 11 and Change 11, just a little mm. bit. But there are people who are working in both MOOCs, and they're literally cross pollinating the. Uh, their findings, their information. It's fun. I love it. Yeah. I but sort of worry I'm about... I'm not sure how to do that other than finding some key people who, who would like to do that. Yeah. I worry about making, like providing access to a group, uh, just the sort of way you phrase it, Jeff. Um, the, the community, I'm not sure exactly how to phrase this. Um, people find access to a community of people to be worth a lot. Uh, so much so that, you know, they would actually pay for it. That's what advertisers do is pay for access to a community. And I'm not sure that the members in the community signed up for being the target of that sort of access. Now, if they did, great, who cares? But uh, like the Change 11 group, for example, uh, if we said sort of suddenly, well, now we're going to make access to this Change 11 group available to uh, Fred's online courses, I think we would probably get opposition from the Change 11 group. So I think it's one thing to support the creation and facilitation of community and a very different thing to support people accessing some existing community that wasn't set up for that purpose. Just my view. Yeah, I mean, that's something to think about. I mean, my, my thinking was I would want, like, it's really about resources and events mm -hmm. and the resources you know i produce materials for my course and i release them in an open way and say okay if anybody wants to use these and remix them go ahead please provide a, a link back so i can see what you've done and maybe i'll use them in my next course the other part of it is providing the event access so that people can say hey i'm teaching this call course here in turkey and i'd love to connect with this community during week three and do some kind of live event and that does have potential for abuse um, yeah yeah well that's kind of what my distributed activities page is doing I mean it's just a open Google Doc but anybody can post there what they're doing here's my class in Turkey everybody come and it's at the central location it's a page on the aggregated blog for the community to access so to me, I'm kind of looking at it the other way, that it's important to me for the community to be able to access the external opportunities rather mm -hmm. than for the people doing the external opportunities to access the community, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, Lisa, and that's pretty much what had happened uh, with one of the students in your group who was also in CMC 11 who saw an opportunity to access 
from her group externally into CMC 11. And, and it was really a great exchange because it happened to dovetail into something I had already started as a discussion. And uh, so she was able to I'm pull sure. information and give information. Yeah. Yeah, I think it works really well. So that's what I meant about cross pollination. I didn't mean the group so much as certain people within the groups. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. There's a certain risk, isn't there? Anyway, if you're doing it openly, I mean, I know Stephen's dealing with 1,800 people, but my group's pretty small. And if I if I did anything like that, or as as it happened with the, our two groups, um, the results are beneficial, and I think the risks are relatively low. I'm not. I'm not sure the extent to which I'd really worry about advertisers or moochers or, or, uh, or that sort of thing. If you've got a community that's that's not 1,800 people and it's focused on a fairly specific topic, why not? Yeah, I see that more as an opportunity than a risk. So I would tend to yeah. agree with you yeah. on that. Lisa. And you can always have policies. I mean, that's something I've realized in managing a lot of different websites is if you have some basic policies like we welcome this kind of activity we ask you not to do this and so if someone starts doing this whoever is you know someone in charge can say please don't do that or if you continue doing that you're going to lose access to the community in some way um, I just wanted to check in with Jenny again. I know she asked a question, an interesting question here in the text chat. Feel free to unmute and ask that. We've also been joined by Rosemary again. Please feel, oh, we lost Rosemary. Hey, Jeff, um, I'm, you know, and just, just recalling a lot of the discussions you guys used to have, what did you call them, town hall meetings in, uh, in the world bridges, uh, in the world bridges sphere. And you, you had a lot of discussions about policy and uh, thinking how you're going to scale and how uh, where you'd have to lay ground rules just in case someone was doing a lot of work and was being exploited and see, you know that sort of thing. Did did it ever happen? I mean, did you ever have a problem, or are we just anticipating? Problems? Well, with most World Bridges communities, no, because it's just a bunch of ed tech geeks and no one really even. Well, I mean, ed tech talk. We open comments up and we do get spam. But it's all moderated, and there's a dozen people who can delete the spam comment before it ever gets online. Korea Bridge, which is a much more traffic community and a much more uh, community full of potential for strife, uh, the policies are in place, and there's and and they work. They generally work. It's all moderated. I work as, it works as a trusted user system. So when for, someone first registers, everything's moderated. As soon as they prove that they're not a spammer or a jerk, they become a trusted user and their content flows. So it takes legwork on my part or click work on my part to, to <laughs> garden that rhizome. Uh, but that's sustainable. And as the community grows, other people have been able to, to help the, the weeding process. But the policies are yeah, important I, because there are times when you have to say, where do we draw this line? Is it okay to – and one of the things like insults, just I, I do not allow insults. If you want to argue with someone's idea, that's fine. As soon as it gets personal, no. So it helps to have some policy to fall back on. Wow, that's a tough one, Jenny. Yeah, and to get that into audio, Jenny is saying push or pull. That is the question as I see it. The push is the right of the members. The pull can be an intrusion or an, or a sharing depending on the individual. Yeah, and if you scroll down to see her next oh. one. Why am I missing the text chat here? Because you oh, here probably, we go. yeah. Ah, I found it. <laughs> and Jenny, again, please feel free to unmute. We'd love to hear you speak your own questions. Uh, for example, my course is for women who are working through issues of relocating to Turkey, seeking political asylum, pretty specific discussions as a vehicle to learn English. So how would I allow others to enter in the community without the background knowledge or the community commitment and or approval? I have, I don't know why my mic is out. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's. I don't know why your mic is out either. Hey, we see her. <laughs> I mean, isn't there yeah, isn't there yeah, another there you role are. you can have? There she is. 
I was thinking there is a role, you know, if you use a, a blog and you have people doing that, then your commenters can sort of be put into that second tier, you know, allowing others to enter the community when they don't have the background knowledge or the approval of the community. You can do that as a, as a commenter, even if you're not a blogger or somebody contributing to the blog. I, I don't know whether that, that helps the situation, but it's, it's a way to kind of make a second tier of participants. And you can, Jeff's trick of, you know, you vet them first. In WordPress, you can, they have to have a previously approved comment to comment kind of vets the commenters a little bit. We have a diffuse chat going here. Peggy is in Yeah, and again, I encourage people to not chat in the Hangout as much as possible <laughs> and chat at edtechtalk.com slash live so but we can avoid it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Just yeah. The more people we get, the less likely that is to actually work. It's just so easy to do it in the chat here, and we're going to have to work out the ding thing, or they're going to have to work it out or something. And the other thing is that this is not automatically screen, archived. Yeah. I mean, the this, this stream, you'll miss people in the stream. <laughs> uh, and, I, but, I need and my Jeff second is window to do it. other things. Mm -hmm. So well, any for me, it's on two separate computers. So. <laughs> we're we're yeah, coming too, up to right? an hour yeah. here. Um, anything else on people's minds? Any other uh, events to plug or projects I to have, contemplate? I have an, an issue with my course in that the people in China are um, not able to deal with edgy blogs. The firewall thing in China, here I set up this entire Smook, if you want to call it that, where everybody's, uh, all of the newbies certainly are using Edublogs uh, rather than WordPress.com. And I've got uh, participants in China who can see everybody's posts because I'm aggregating it to a WordPress, my own WordPress blog, and so they can see them no problem. Mm -hmm. But they cannot participate. They cannot comment mm -hmm. on anybody's blog if that blog is in Edublogs. And I feel really badly. It's like set up this whole course, and then the people from China are are limited in their participation. If anybody's got ideas on that, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, me too. Because my my tech guy is in China, <clears throat> Sam, and I would love for him to be able to come to the Hangouts, but he just can't get into Google, and especially not uh, the Google Plus Hangouts. So there's certain things he can and cannot do from his location right. in China. Yeah, they're able to do Google. They're in Shanghai, and they're able to do Google, but Edublogs is just completely blocked. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So it depends upon where you are in China as to what you have access to. Exactly, and I just wondered if there was some workaround where somehow some, their comments could somehow participate in the conversation. Well, what do they have access to? They seem to be able to get an individual WordPress blog, no problem, because they've got the central blog. They seem to be able to get the ones from the students who have WordPress.com. They're accessing Google just fine, all of the Google apps and, and Hangouts and everything, no problem. They're getting, they can get Collaborate. When we do a Collaborate session, no problem. Edublogs in particular has been blocked, and it makes it so they can't comment on each other's blogs, and that's adversely affecting the whole distributed conversation idea. Mm -hmm. Well, they could just comment in their own blogs. I mean, that's, you know, that's actually, in many ways, a better way of doing it in any case. Yeah, I'll recommend they can do that and reference. I, I know they can at least get the link to the post that they're talking about from the aggregated blog, so that that may be the only thing they could do. It just seems like yeah. seems like there ought to be some way to run something through something to put it somewhere. <laughs> well, there's probably proxy servers and things like that, but now you're you're talking about getting them to root around the firewall and uh, mm -hmm. uh, be subversive in their own country, and it's probably just it's not worth it, not not for this particular course. Nothing against the course, but you know, your course, a lifetime in jail, they don't really mm, balance. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd agree with that, yeah. What about Ning? Do you think Ning would work there? I, I don't really know, but it's a, a blog platform. As far as I know, they haven't had any trouble accessing Ning. It's just mm, I, didn't, okay. I didn't set up the 
anything ending or the course isn't isn't operating there it's operating in these open mm -hmm. blocks and if if of course i had not encouraged so many people to use edublogs as their platform we wouldn't mm. be stuck this way it was just edublogs support for total newbies was so good that that i felt like it was a great place to start if you were really really scared and didn't know what you were doing yeah that's interesting i'm sorry i'm getting a lot of background noise from someone who has voices oh, in the hallway gosh, it, it could it's me i think yeah, so it's the guys outside I'll, I'll just mute when i'm not talking thank you Find out how to do that. this is a weird one i am so non-techy but i just had a thought um whatever blog in china's working could you somehow establish a blog here with that blog and somehow feed your edu blog into that blog or vice versa so that that's a, a, a universal blog that you're accessing and they can access but it's feeding that's what, that's what i have actually the whole course is in mm -hmm. an aggregated blog that they have no trouble mm -hmm. accessing and it would be i think there's over 60 of them that are in edu blogs so yeah, uh, we've essentially already got that set up, but it's not helping because they can't comment. Because I've got the comments set up to refer out to the person's original blog to keep the conversation in everybody's own space, as opposed to having them comment on the aggregated blog. I could have set it up that right. way, but that's not where I wanted the conversation to happen because the ownership of their own blog in their own space, especially for the new people, was really an important part of our pedagogy. And just a quick tech resource I tossed in the other chat room, justping.com, which lets you check where sites are blocked. So you can enter the URL and it will uh, show you the ping stats from around the world. Cool, thanks. Well, Jenny, you could go to the edtechtalk.com slash live chat room, but I'll go ahead and toss it in there as well. <laughs> Good luck, Jeff. Make it, yeah, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep fighting for that. And I'm going to keep fighting for audio comments. I've been fighting for audio comments on blogs since 2005. I'm not going to give up. No, I think that's a great idea. Actually, we're having people in the, in the course that I'm running who are like, you know, I don't want to be writing this much. I don't want to be writing these blog posts. And I keep saying, you know, you don't have to do that. You can, <laughs> your post can be audio or your video or whatever you want to you make a drawing. You know, it, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't make any difference, but everybody is just so, they're kind of stuck in the idea that a blog post is something that you type and that has paragraphs. And um, so we're going to be working with the tools. As we get into the tools, maybe people will feel more comfortable and start uh, audio blogging. But it, it isn't. An and none of those have kicked in. I remember Snapvine and Riffly and a whole bunch of mm -hmm. services, and none of them have gained traction. I just, for me, it's so much easier to yeah. go blah, blah, blah for a couple of minutes than sit down and write something. Yeah, I'm real fond of iJot just because you can do a video thing and just. Mm -hmm talk and it's on video and then it's there and then you can just embed it in your post and you're done and it's easy. But then you have to deal with the end user's hardware and do they have, you know, do they have the hardware that will do the audio and the recording and all that. But I find blogs very intimidating. When we did uh, Vance's course it's my first blog, and it was very hard for me not to sit and try to write a research paper. Yeah. <laughs> what was the resource you mentioned, Lisa? Is it iJot? Uh, iJot. Which chat should I put it in, Jeff? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I is this screens. is a distributed I mean, conversation. Yes, yeah, distributed. Yeah, Jeff, I'm like two screens and eighteen tabs. I'm not hearing all that pinging now when people are texting in Google. Did you turn it off? No, I'm still hearing it. If there's a, oh. sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Must be a no, setting. I'm not hearing it either. I heard it one time during all this texting, which is nice because it's nice to have one window. <laughs> Well, George, I have a question for you about this change 11. Are you posting anywhere on the newsletter anything that you are not going to 
create a group moderated discussion so people understand your um, thinking behind it, which I think is very uh, rational. You know, uh, you know, don't they sometimes police themselves? Like you can get in a classroom, and sometimes when some students are dominating, the rest of the class will tell them just to be quiet. Um, but moderating and having moderators is quite a lot. And moderating always involves overhead. Lots of overhead. Yeah. I, I try to avoid it. Because who has time? And, and, and life is too short to be spent deleting comments. But I think your idea of, of giving like the newsletter and saying, okay, here's other resources. You choose your time. Mm -hmm. You follow who you find that you like. But I also, the Google Circles thing, I'm still experimenting with. And so I joined, somebody shared the Change 11 Google Circle with me. Come on. And that's, I can't quite figure out. Yesterday I hit a Google Plus thing on a website and I guess it's a little bit intrusive for the end user that's in the circle because he said he got some pop-up that said you've got a new post. But it, it on the surface Google Circles seems a good way to subdivide um, groups of people chatting and interlock them and but I don't know I haven't used it enough oh. wait was that Jenny so moaning I think Did it's Carol oh was that you moaning Carol no no, no that, that was Jenny we heard it you Jenny. Jenny don't run away she's <laughs> got to get the baseball we back just in time to leave <laughs> <laughs> and there's Vance, a great, there's had you a great commercial on TV that used to run where the guy stood up with a baseball bat and smashed his computer. Vance, were you trying to say something, but you were muted? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was just saying that how I, in talking about moderation, uh, Ning, uh, its big disadvantage is that it, it, unless you pay hundreds of dollars a year for it, um, if you want Pearson to sponsor it for you, you're limited to 150 members, and that just becomes impossible to manage yeah. because you know any community that has any is worth doing is going to grow, and uh, once it grows to 150 members, all of a sudden you're you're just culling all the time. It's just impossible. It, 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 I had yeah. to abandon it for the multiple. You're also sports. farming for Pearson. You're also farming customers for Pearson. That really bothered me. That's why we're not using Wise IQ. It's, uh, the farming thing. Mm. Jenny, I think we hear you. I didn't Hello, realize Jenny. they were doing it too. Oh yeah, you anyone I lost everything. Wise IQ catches the email of every participant. There's Google no probably way around right now it. I'm swearing. Oh, that's that's really <laughs> kind of sucks. We hear the that swearing. Was my backup Steven, I guess I won't do it. Yeah, you'll you'll find people can't log in you to uh, any conversation without uh, giving their email address up one way or another. Hmm. Great. Yeah. So Jenny, we do hear you. Unfortunately, she's uh, suffering she's from. She's stunned into silence. Well, I, I would call it Down syndrome, but that's already I taken. I hear what Stephen is saying. He seems to be saying something <laughs> intelligent. I would like to listen. So. <laughs> So we hear her voice, but she can't hear us. She must be using Windows 7. <laughs> so, Stephen, when you were dealing with the Windows 7 issue, did you go to your volume mixer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did all that. Um, and uh, no, and I did it last time and I did it this time. It's not a volume mixer issue at all. Um, you know, and I can even prove it. Like. <laughs> There. And also screen share. 
See? You can also screenshot that, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> it's more fun this way. And and you found that's the Google Talk. The Google Talk plugin is not minimized. No. See, look. Are right, you gonna have to see? zoom in? So, because the two, there, you've got the Google Talk plugin plus you've got. Um... I don't use Chrome. I oh. use Firefox. That shouldn't be a problem. It, it doesn't work in Chrome either, though. Hmm. That's funny. So. It was a, I had the problem the other way around. I can't get this to work properly in Firefox. Any Hangout, really, uh, it chokes in yeah. Firefox, but it works fine in Chrome. Yeah, mine too. The same problem. Yep. Go figure. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's a little bit of Google proprietary technology thing mm. happening. Yeah. Uh, they're That's pulling what I Microsoft. Think. Yeah. Well, with Stevens, it works fine in, in Firefox. Uh, now, on my on the MacBook, it works fine in Firefox. On on the Windows mm. 7 machine, it does not work either in Firefox or in Chrome. I tried it with mm. both. Mm. Or or in Opera. Or mm. in Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. So it's... Wow. Uh, no, and I looked it up, and uh, what was it? It's uh, it's it's a it's a default sampling rate problem hmm. is what it is, hmm. and and there's no way to reset it <laughs> according to Google specifications. I, I went, you know, I did a search for the problem, and it is a known issue. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one one of the biggest lessons I've ever learned online. Uh, if you have a problem. Someone else has already had that problem and complained about it somewhere. Mm. It's never just you, ever. So it, it's a Windows Seven issue. It's a is that right? Uh, well, it's a Google issue. Oh. Because well, I mean, it's a Google issue on it's a Google Hangout issue because everything else works on Windows Seven. Only uh -huh. Hangout fails. Therefore, it's uh -huh. a Hangout issue. Um, uh huh. I, I don't know if I, I suspect this is not related, but have you checked your chat settings in your Gmail when you go to your chat? I don't I, use Gmail. Well, you must have a Gmail if you're using Hangouts. And it's got a setting whether you're using it or not. Because yeah. the Hangout settings are not sticky. Uh, and I've had issues where I change things in the Hangout, but they don't stay. But if I go to my Gmail and it, click the little chat settings, on the left column mm -hmm. uh, and change my audio settings there, they stick. Yeah. So, Jenny. Well, I don't you, use email. I would try to convince you of this, but. No, I, I, tr I believe you. I'm just, you know, I'm a <laughs> troubleshooting geek by, yeah. by default. Yeah. And I won't use Gmail because if I activate Gmail, then all my notifications from Google for anything will default to that Gmail account instead of mm -hmm. to my own email account. And I don't want that. Well, you can't not want Google because it wants you. Yeah. <laughs> so the only way to get emails sent from Google to Stephen at Downs.ca is to not have a Gmail account. Mm -hmm. Or to set up a forwarder. Pardon? Just set up a forwarder in Gmail. I don't want to use. I don't want them going to Gmail. Mm -hmm. I want them going to my email. And once you put Gmail in, everything, every account that it's popped out to from right. Gmail uh, is listed as Gmail, and everything that you yeah. use from there says it's connected to Gmail. You can't get away yeah. from it once you once mm -hmm. you hook it up. That's it. Yeah, it it represents my email to the world as a Gmail yep. email. Well, yeah, but that's oh. very like exactly. when I send it. I when I send an email from Gmail, I can choose like 12 different addresses. Yeah, but when it gets there, it still says it came from your Gmail account. It no, used it, to not say that. It, if you look at the headers, you might find it. But when someone looks at it, it no, it's Jeff from KoreaBridge.net or Jeff at EdTechTalk.com. It doesn't do that with mine. I've got, I've got five accounts in Gmail, and no matter which one I send it from, it, sends, it tells them it's been sent through, and it gives them the Gmail address. I'm emailing you right now. Okay. I can't find your Gmail though. 
<laughs> Good. No, it's Lisa history. <laughs> oh. <As you> know. <laughs> the other the other thing with uh, auto forwarding is that you auto forward not just the email that gets sent to you, but all the spam that goes to the Gmail account. I have a separate hidden Gmail account that I never use for anything. Uh, it's on a separate Google account entirely. And every once in a while I go into it because I use it to ch test to see how OL Daily is showing up in Gmail. And when I go into it, I see my OL Dailies and a pile of spam, a yep. huge pile mm. of spam. Mm. And so this is, this is an email that isn't published anywhere. The spammers are just using random name generators to hit it. Hmm. All yeah, right, every Lisa. thing happened in my alternate Gmail accounts. Yes, Jeff, I'm checking. My e email account. is sent. Who is it from? Um, it's not coming through yet. The, the tubes are clogged. Yeah. Well, and my computer is just kind of... This Growing. is always very challenging to a computer that's several years old, the whole Hangout thing. Uh -huh. So I have a question about giving into the, the forum idea because in my in the the smook I guess we'll call it that I'm running there I, I did a little survey to, and I got some results saying uh, we're not where do we talk about things and they don't get the whole blog comment idea and and they want another place and so I did a little poll and it's exactly 50 50 50 percent say yeah we need a place a forum a Google group uh, something mm. and 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 50 percent are going no no let's keep it on the blogs and and of course, the stuff that I've read says, you know, keep it on the box because we want to, we want them working more in that environment and not be dependent on a centralized forum, which makes perfect sense to me. And we already have a Facebook group just sort of accidentally that some people are in. And so some people are saying, well, let's just go there. Mm. And I'm wondering sort of the significance. If I do set up a Google group, I mean, they could do it. Any of them could. Yeah, set they should do it. Group. Yeah, that's why I was going to say, well, if you want to set it up. Yeah, and if you want to set up a group. And here's this guy complaining, there's no Google group, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, set one up. Set one it's up, just, right. Yeah, well, you know, I, like, yeah but I, I had a mentor in the class who said, you know, do you want me to set one up? And it's like, well, you know, let's see if people want it. And, you know, we all, again, we yeah. only have 95 people, so you don't want to set up a Google group that seven people are going to use and go, oh, this was a bummer. It didn't didn't do anything for me. Um, but it, you know, people can set it up themselves. But should I be setting one up so they have a more central location, or is that just going to pull from the blogging, commenting thing that we're trying to encourage here? It totally will pull from it, and everybody will be shouting loud in the central area, trying to be heard. We've kind of got the opposite problem, Stephen, of yeah. people sort of keeping their head down and not yeah. wanting to be heard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I, I am concerned about doing that, and I don't want to appear to not be doing what folks want, because that's not good. Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it is a challenge. I do agree with you there, Lisa. With the credit-bearing students that are in uh, the MOOC that I'm working with, I've had to find a central spot to put them, but so far I can't get all of them into the same central spot. Uh, I'm working on Google Hangouts now, but... It, None of, some of them don't want to go on Facebook, some of them didn't want to go into Digo, right. others didn't know what to do, and so they're just having to float, and you know, that's okay. Yeah, they're sooner in or Digo. Later, they're sooner in or Digo. later, they're going to have to find a way to, to communicate with one another. Right. All I can do is supply some avenues and not let them get too crazed about getting into all of them. I feel odd about encouraging the Facebook group. It's where a lot of people have ended up anyway, and it's already there. And I know a lot of people are in Facebook. We've got a few people. I mean, I hate Facebook too, but I'm there because everybody's there, right? But um, I don't want to be saying, well, if you if you must do this, go to Facebook. But, well, I purposely didn't set Facebook up. One of the students did. And so, right. you know, that's fine. Yeah, same here. Yeah, our group isn't set up for the course. It's set up for the program for online teaching. It's our main main Facebook group, and it's just the course members found their way there, and that's fine. They can yeah. talk there. Yeah. What about this? This is, sounds very traditional education, but why not um, ask different people to team lead? Those that want to be on Facebook are required to 
summarize or encapsulate on your blog and the ones in China, somebody has a team leader that aggregates that information, puts a summary on a central place so that they're, you know, it's kind of connect and the ones that want to shout and talk the most are able to um, do it. <laughs> well, that's already happening on their blog. Yeah, that's already happening on their blogs because it's an aggregated mm -hmm. blog it's all feeding into. So the, the talkers are already creating long posts with lots of links and lots of images and those are popping to the top of the uh, aggregated blog and that, that's, that's fine. But I can't require anything. This isn't a, there's no for credit in this. I mean, it's... No, I meant volunteers. I well, I have Volunteers because some people love it. And some no. people have a, a time and, you know, there's certain times that people have the time to do it in their lives. It's hard, though, but I don't see, just listening to you all talk, considering all the variables in um, governments and firewalls and countries and hardware and the proliferation of just a million different kinds of blogging systems and posting systems and groups. Uh, it's, everything is so fractured now. I don't know. It just seems right now that it, there is no universal answer. And that's well, a good thing. Yeah, that's what I yeah. think too. And it, 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 that gives access to at least something for everybody yeah. instead of one thing that some people can't access at all. The, the difficulty is that people who aren't used to operating in this sort of distributed way uh, feel lost and alienated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I think that also feeds into what uh, George Siemens was talking about with the personal learning environments is that you self-select. So right. if we set something up, you're not self-selecting. Right. It makes it a little tougher for me because some people are selecting this, some people are selecting that, but that's just for the credit bearing students and that's my challenge see if you pick one particular technology that technology creates significant constraints uh, you know the choice of a technology is not neutral and when you pick some technology you're saying we value this we value this we don't value that we don't value that mm -hmm. and that automatically uh, elevates some participants and, and uh, de-elevates uh, uh, other participants. Uh, you know, it, it puts them at different levels uh, according to whether they have this technology or they work better in this kind right. of environment, etc. Right. So it's better to have multiple ways of participating. And yes, there is no center but again, I don't see that as a loss. I see that as an improvement, and and right. the content still gets shared. You know, it's just that nobody can dominate what gets shared anymore. Well, we have we have a center. I think most of these MOOCs have some kind of center that's for information relay. It's not. There's no communication yeah. center, but there's a communication that is um, the one-way communication has a central location. Whether well, it's we have the, the, wiki. the newsletter, right? Right, I mean, the newsletter. And, thread. Well, and the and the wiki for yours as well, right? If you want to know what the heck's going on, you you go there. So if you want information of yeah. you know what time things are set up, what the readings yeah. are, who's coming to the synchronous session, there is somewhere to go for information. But to, to yeah. turn it into a communication hub, you don't want a hub for communication, I no. think. And in our case, you know, we're trying to teach people how to teach online using the entire web as the classroom. So right. limiting limiting to a particular forum is kind of the last thing we want to do even though it's probably it probably would increase their comfort level. Mm -hmm. And I find myself tussling between the comfort level of the participants and their willingness to participate and what I really feel they should be learning about the web as this distributed place. Does providing yeah. that forum mean limiting them to that forum? It's, I, I'm thinking not limiting them to it, but suggesting that, oh, well, if you're uncomfortable with everything else, come on into the forum where it's all comfy cozy. I, I, I'm not sure that's a good thing. No, I think it, I'm sure it's not. 
I mean, we we stopped using the Moodle forums just because they had this distorting effect on the course. But in in our case, if people drop out because they are so uncomfortable, or because the distributed aspect of the course was introduced somehow too soon, we may be losing people that we could have really helped get used to the distributed nature of what we're doing. I, I, the, the effective component here, I think, is significant. I don't want to be just ignoring it and saying, no, everybody's mm -hmm. got to come out and play in my yard. I think that's very valid and it's a hard balance. I think all of it is because I've been thinking mm. about it since Vance's course. Um, whether you gradually st step them up, you know, offering a few avenues and then open it up and say, okay, you know, you choose your avenue, you give them a week or two introduction, which I think you already said you did. Um, but it is about teaching online, and that's that's the critical piece here. If this was just a different type of course, mm -hmm. but this is a course about teaching online, and when you reflect back after the chaos, you realize mm -hmm. that, okay. You learned something. Well, you learned something, but also um, you're really, you most people now, by this stage, after let's say within the last five years, everything has changed so dramatically. But people intuitively know and feel the internet is as chaotic as it is, and they already know that. So then, when you're showing them how to somehow teach a course leading through the chaos, at the end of the day, after they get through the chaos and that uncomfortable feeling, you know, it's but it just sounds like you're not going to be able to control everything. You're not going to be able to control their comfort factor, their um, intuitive sense of what they want to do or don't do. And, you know, like ESL, I mean, English language learners, you have to let them lurk a while before you have them try speaking. You know, nothing's worse mm -hmm. than than making them speak before they're ready. So as far as blogging, I was... I was all caught up with, oh, I need to write a research paper because I like to, to I just have to slap something up there to get started and allow myself to s sort of, whatever I slapped up there actually was very backwards of if I had sat and outlined it and thought about it. And, and that's the thing about moderation, to sit and have to read things that are already outdated within a couple days just doesn't seem right. So what I'm trying to say is this is all new to them. The fact that you're not, te you're, you're having to go with the internet and teach the way it is, not under a learning management system. Mm -hmm. You can't control their comfort level. You can't control the end user's hardware and whatever country they're in and whatever firewall issues. Just even within the U.S. and the, you know, the universities. Um, or yeah, you know, I, I I try to distance a course at a community center, and they were using a home router because that's <laughs> all they could afford. And we were doing Second Life, and we were all it was young kids. It was Teen Second Life, which was a huge hurdle to get them in. And I was off site, and they'd be on for 30 minutes, and pow, it would short circuit the whole community system. And I mean, there's just so many variables that you, my only suggestion, and I saw Vance do it, and he can speak to this better. And what I, my question for, um, I'm sorry, I thought it was George. Who's running Change 11? Steven. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Steven, Steven I'm sorry. They all look alike. Um, <laughs> um, is that a very prominent intro that hangs where whenever they sign on to the main page that says we're deliberately not moderating we're deliberately not running them through this one system we want you to f you know follow the blogs and and follow the direction you wish to I mean I noticed mm -hmm. Vance can say this but I noticed at least the first week and a half he kept trying to say that same point several different ways that's probably yeah. echoing some of 
sorry, some of George's, what George's, uh, you know, some of the recordings he's made. But go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a lesson we've learned in in the uh, connectivism courses. Uh, Dave Cormier recorded a few. What is a MOOC? Here's what a MOOC is. Here's how to be mm -hmm. successful. In the Change Eleven MOOC, uh, we ran a, a full week long orientation mm -hmm. because there's a lot of expectations that people have that change when you offer a course in this way. You know the the big ex there's two big expectations and the the conversation thing that we've been talking about is the third one and the first big expectation is that they'll be led through yeah step by step and mm -hmm. we have to tell them no there's not going to be any leading through mm -hmm. we don't do that uh, you know and and George will do his thing and I'll do my thing and Dave will do his thing and you know, we'll, we'll do it in a linear fashion because we all live in time, but we're, we're not doing some kind of structured this, then this, then this, then this sort of presentation. And then the second big thing is the idea that there's some body of content that they have to read all of and then remember. And our course is not like this at all. There isn't some core body of content that they're supposed to remember. That's not the point of it at all. And we have to tell them over and over, pick and choose, don't try to read everything. Pick and choose, don't try to read everything. Even we as the moderators skip stuff because we can't follow everything. And we, in the first week, we just repeated that message over and over and over. And we repeat it throughout the course because people forget. And then they say, we're falling behind. And I tell mm -hmm. them, there's no such thing as falling behind. <laughs> uh, if you, you know, learned anything, you've gained, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You learn well, two I things, do. you gain twice as much. Yeah. Go ahead. Lisa, yeah. We, do have, we do have set readings. We do have tasks that are supposed to be completed every week. But um, you don't remember them. It's not about remembering content. Right. It's about exploring, uh, go take a look at this website, go play with this tool, mm -hmm. um, and just sort of loosely organized as a topic for, for that week, and then reflect about it, blog about it, play with the tool, post something in the tool, that kind of thing. And yeah, people are saying, oh no, I'm getting behind, and it's like, well, yeah, okay, if you haven't done week two, if you haven't done week three, okay, so you're behind, so we'll read your week two and week three when you post it. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. Um, but you know, yeah, there is that that expectation. Um, in our case, it is, it is a little bit more task oriented. But what's actually causing it to be a little more chaotic is that the people who are used to other MOOCs, particularly our mentors, are doing what I would like everybody else to be doing near the end of the class. They're going off and finding other things, and they're oh look, yeah. I found something <laughs> that's related to right, and they're pulling it in. And the effect of that has been. For people who are working at that level anyway, this is great. Uh -huh. For people who are new, they're going, oh my god, am I supposed to be doing that too? Am I supposed to also be not just doing this task, but I'm also supposed to be pulling in the stuff? And they think the expectation is different than we've actually stated. And I found right. myself having to restate the, no, no, no. If, you get, if it gets wild, if it gets chaotic, if you get confused, just go back to the task list. Go back to the syllabus and see you know, are you experiencing the things that we've scheduled? And don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Just enjoy it. Read it. Don't read it. It's all good. I've, I've got a few similes or analogies or whatever. I know Stephen likes analogies. But one of them is it's like fishing. You know, you if, you, if you're hungry, you go and fish. You don't worry about all the fish you don't catch, right? You just yeah, catch yeah, yeah. fish and you, and you eat. Or a, a berry bush is one a metaphor that's been uh, around for a long time. Uh, there's a conduit way of learning in a meta, in a berry bush way. In the berry bush, kind of like uh, one of your talks, Stephen. I remember about uh, getting kidnapped in Barcelona and the citizens yeah. signposting for you. You know, basically, you're you're setting up signposts, and you don't feel like you have to go yeah. everywhere. You just go where you want to go. You know, mm -hmm. and you don't worry about the places, all the all the signs that pointed ways you didn't go. Um, and uh, another one is its media. It, it, there's so much media around you that you just don't even think about. You know, yeah. you know, right now we're missing something on television. We're missing something on radio. We're miss, we're not reading our newspaper right. I know now. I there's hate so much, that. 
Yeah. Stuff yeah. happening on the all new radio channel, and I'm not listening to it right now. Yeah, it's yeah, and, and so there's stuff there's stuff going on in the MOOC that you're not getting. So what? Yeah. You know, you get you get what you're sitting, what's in front of you. You you get that the the fact that you sat down and you put yeah. it in front of you yeah. and you absorb something. That's that's what media is all yeah. about, and and that's the, the the connection people don't make with this internet. Uh, the the things that you know, the Twitter streams, and so they miss. 99% of it. So what? You just pick what streams by when you wake up in the morning, yeah? But it's really funny. Uh, actually, I think this is hilarious because I, I, liked, I liked the city analogy a lot because when you visit a new city for the first time, say Barcelona, there are, you know, you can get maps, you can look at signposts, etc. But there are also these guided tours, right? You know, the the bus that you mm -hmm. can go on, right? And then you drive around the city and somebody stands there. And uh, and it's Lisa has the problem Lisa? No, Jenny has the problem. No Lisa. It is Lisa, that's what I thought. Uh, has the problem she's got people sitting on we the tour like bus <laughs> uh, she's got city people sitting on the tour bus looking out the window at people walking around unguided on the street and thinking should i be doing that too which is really kind of funny because uh, it's like the but, escorted escorted tour tour and the unescorted yeah. tour. The people on the other bus look like they're having more fun. The pe yeah, is they're looking mm -hmm. at people on the other bus and saying they're having more fun than we are. What's going on here? So, but I think <laughs> you know, and you know, you can go back to the same city over and over again and never discover everything, or you can go back to a city and say, well, I'm done with that city. Um, I've seen everything in this city I want to see. Uh, I'm not planning to live here. So as a tourist destination, really, mm -hmm. I'm not coming back. Uh, all of those are perfectly valid. And obviously, lots of people do live in the city and they walk around the streets in a completely unguided and random mm -hmm. fashion. And that's the case, too. I so like the, I I like like the tour analogy. Yeah, uh, I like the tour, the tour bus thing because the, the expectation yeah. is for the escorted tour where we take you to every restaurant mm -hmm. and sit you down and give yeah. you a menu with limited items yeah, uh, yeah. versus the unescorted tour where here's your hotel and the bus will leave in the morning and go do what you want yeah. we'll see you in 18 hours. Yeah. But, but, but isn't that, I'm back on, believe it or not, technology. Hey, my way. hey Jenny. Yes, hi. But I, I've only been on for a minute or so, and I'm probably jumping into the wrong spot. But what I see is a difference between the inquiry, a deductive and an inductive, uh, an inquiry approach versus a structured learning approach. Um, and, and I, you know, as a school teacher for 35 years, you know, I always know where I'm at in the lesson, whether I'm using a deductive mm -hmm. or an inductive approach, whether I'm, I'm a pro, um, trying to develop some inquiry skills or I'm letting them problem solve or this is so essential, this is core knowledge, hey guys, sit still, listen to me. So can it not be both and we just need the leader to know that? Or how do we give that knowledge to the listener that they are too can have that knowledge and make awareness and become aware of how they're using their knowledge? And that's yes. the difference, metacognition. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to encourage. The difficulty is that the people who are already metacognitive keep jumping mm -hmm. in before the people <laughs> who aren't are ready to understand what they're doing. <laughs> Okay, okay, now yeah. I see. Okay, that guy, the scope of the, cl the class is, has to be uh, prereqs, right? You need some prerequisite skills, I guess. That's what you're looking for. But no, that's true in any learning. The skills right? they think they have. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I think we have set a new Coolcast record coming up on two hours now. Uh, any final thoughts or events to plug or anything else? It was a great session. Thanks, Jeff. I'll put in my plug for tomorrow, noon uh, Eastern Time, CMC 11, for meta literacy, trans literacy, forming social media. Uh, one final thought whether you get on the bus or follow your signposts, either way, you're going to learn about the city. Good point. You'll learn something about the city. Thanks, oh, that's true. That's true. 
Well, it depends. Yeah. I mean, if you've been on the same tour three times. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, no, no, you'll you would learn something. You you learn in a different way. It depends on what you yeah. you know which city you're in and what you want to learn. But but anyway, both can be effective for different learners. And if you're if drinking are, some wine, you're going to have a good time whether you learn something or not. There you people, go. People you see out the window will be wearing different clothes each time. <laughs> that's right. And that's my perspective. You learn in whatever stage of development you are. I mean, the third time you go around the city, you're in a different place and you're picking up different cues and learning different things. But I, I just think your, your situation is a little bit tougher because you are dealing with educators who have been trained and have learned many ways. Maybe if you start with showing a video of how a kid will use many medias to pull their information and how they're dealing with it. Well, remind we've done, them. Yeah, we did lots of tutorials. It's just people still, I mean, you're never sure who watches what, who sees what. You can put things in a central location if you want to, yeah, or a newsletter. I started doing a newsletter by email, but um, I, we did all the preparation we thought would help people become more comfortable mm -hmm. and understand what we were doing. And, in some cases, I'm sure it worked. In other cases, people are, are freaked. Well, then maybe you shouldn't um, try to please everyone and let the freaked be freaked, and they'll be back six months in a different yeah. mindset, maybe. Because yeah, exactly. there were a couple that, that dropped out immediately in our course, and I had been with one that was in the previous course, and he was very, he was a uh, type A did everything perfectly, very thoroughly, worked so hard, and did it all in a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so this yeah. was very difficult for him, and maybe in six months he'll be back, and maybe he won't, but you can't okay. control that either. And that's okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's part of choosing your own path. If you want to yeah. not walk down that path, that's an option. And, and you know what? Yeah. I do have a comment on that. I, I have a comment on that as a preschool teacher. Okay. It's egocentric of us as instructors of adults to think that their expressive um, response to what we try to teach them is the only valid response. A preschool teacher knows that we're pouring it in, it may take a year or two, way beyond my classroom before it comes out. And that's the faith we have to have as a teacher. So what you're doing, if you're doing it to the best of your ability and you're using the resources you have and you're constantly reflecting on what you're doing and the goals of what you're doing, I think that even some of those students who say they're not getting it or are complaining, they don't know yet, but they have gotten it. And that's right. the faith we have. Yeah. But they, so have just to come to class. they have to come to class. I mean, they've got to be in the environment to be able to get through the mm -hmm. stuff. And in, in here, you've got the option of just not coming anymore. I have had people who've complained all the way through and then come <laughs> back later and said, you know, you've ruined regular learning for me. Right, right. <laughs> well, they all the way if they complained all the way through, they were there all the way through, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, that's really cool. You guys did a great job. Well, thanks for inviting me into your little clubhouse here. I really like it. I'll try to find you again. Okay. Well, congratulations uh, on making it. Turkey. Where's everyone else? I don't know. I'm in Aqua yeah, Turkey. It's uh, 650. New York, Where? upstate New York. Oh, I'm in Abu Dhabi. Abu oh, Dhabi so evening. It, so it's Gotta 9 o'clock or so. Yes, okay. Pusan, Korea, in, uh, coming up on 1 a.m. I'm in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, and uh, I've been talking through my lunch hour. Oh, okay. Well, you better have lunch. I hope everyone has a great lunch, dinner, sleep breakfast, whatever's coming up. We'll be back same time <laughs> next week. Uh, we'll post links to the CMC and Change 11 uh, events. Thanks, everyone. Great conversation. We'll look forward to continuing next Thanks, time. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.